What's going on guys? Today we're going to be jumping into shoulder pain in the bench press. We saw some comments on the last video with our lower back pain in the deadlift. Check it out up above or wherever the hell that's going to be. Today we're going to be jumping into the bench press going over some of the issues you may run into or some pain points that we can kind of focus in on and things we can do for your bench press before you actually bench that can help you avoid those uh, symptoms or potentially that pain. So let's jump into it. Why does shoulder pain happen during the bench press? Well, a couple different reasons. I'll have Alex demonstrate here. In the bench press, what we're doing, especially if you're a competitive power lifter or trying to bench as much as you possibly can, we are living in that scapular retraction, forcing those shoulder blades down and back. A lot of things may happen uh, in the bench press, bench press specifically if you are lacking the necessary mobility or stability in those shoulder blades, where you're going to be finding the most pain point is going to be most likely in the front of that shoulder. So today we're going to be focusing in on ways of mitigating some of that stress and some of that pain in that front shoulder, um, utilizing a bunch of different stuff that we're going to, be going to be going over here in a minute. But what I want to showcase here is in the competitive style bench press or a powerlifting bench press, you are requiring a lot of scapular mobility as well as stability but also if you notice here if he's arching a lot of thoracic extension so again if you are all bound up if you're unable to get into the proper position and, and pack those shoulder blades down and back then that movement is going to be coming from the lower back but also you're going to be putting a ton of pressure on the front of that shoulder as that bar comes down You'll notice here, right, if he didn't have the necessary ability to <laughs> stabilize those shoulder blades, you can see all that pressure ends up in that front of that shoulder. So what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be going over some mobility, some stability exercises and means of you strengthening up your shoulder, the area around your shoulder blades, your upper back, and hopefully getting you out of pain. So here we go. All right, guys, so the first place we want to start when going over uh, potential causes for that shoulder pain or enabling you to bench better with better mobility is with our thoracic spine. The reason for that is that thoracic spine is going to be the foundation of movement for our shoulder blades and all the movement of those shoulder blades is going to start at that thoracic level. So what we're doing when we're talking about thoracic spine uh, mobility, what we want to focus in on is extension and flexion. For most people, they live in a very flexed position all the time. That upper back is really, really, really tight. So what we want to be able to do is extend in that thoracic spine without relying too much on that lumbar spine. So what we want to do here, Alex, starting that top position. Yep. So you want the foam roller just about underneath your shoulder blades. What I like to do to start is I like to kind of squeeze in, good. Keeping this rib cage and pelvis stacked, imagine you're doing some sort of a crunch here. What I want him to do is just kind of lean back just a little bit without losing that rib cage. Keep going all the way, all the way, keep going. You notice he's not flaring up yet. There you go, keep going, keep going. Good, you feel that like tension a yep. little bit? Good. So what you want to do here is really focus in on making sure that all of that stretch and all of that force is going into that thoracic spine and that he's not just simply dumping his ribs, so I'll go all the way down, just flaring his rib cage up. Because as you can see, that movement is not coming from his thoracic spine, it's coming from his lumbar spine. And that's not what we're looking for. We're making sure that we're able to properly extend through that upper back in order for us to be able to provide the foundation we need for those scaps to move later on when we're benching. So when you're doing this, I focus in on breaths. I'll hold the position for two or three breaths. I'll come back out. So we'll come back up and then I'll roll that foam roller a little higher up on that thoracic spine and do the same thing. Again, trying to keep a little bit of that core stiffness, maintaining that stacked position a little bit and really focusing on opening up that extension portion of that thoracic spine. All right, guys, now that we worked on the extension of that thoracic spine, opened up a little bit, now we need to work on its ability to rotate. One of the things about the spine that's really, really cool is that the higher up on the spine you are, your cervical spine meant to rotate, your thoracic spine is meant to rotate, but that lumbar spine is not. So one of the issues that happens is if that thoracic spine is not rotating as it should, again, that motion is gonna be coming from somewhere else, 
most of the time it's that lumbar spine. So not only is this gonna help you with your shoulders, your shoulder health and making sure that you're out of shoulder pain, it's also gonna help you with your lumbar spine health and your lower back pain potentially as well. So what we're gonna be doing here to work on that rotation is a thread the needle. Very simple exercise. You can do this with a foam roller or without. Today we're gonna do, uh, do this with it. So what you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be in this quadruped position here. Again, when we're focusing in on thoracic rotation, we need to make sure that all the motion is coming from this part of his spine, right? We wanna make sure all the motion and rotation is here and nothing from here. So what I'm gonna have him do is I want him to actually sink his hips back a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, there you go. Now, he's gonna put one arm like a karate chop on the foam roller here. And what we're gonna be doing is reaching that hand right through focusing in on rotating through his upper back, rotating here, but not allowing this to rotate. We're not focusing any effort on here. Everything should be here. So as he reaches through, reaching through that spot between his leg and his arm, I want him to take a big deep breath into that upper back, allowing everything to kind of stretch, allowing everything to start to free up a little bit. So in that position, take a big deep breath, inhale here, all the, all the air comes up here. And as you exhale, you can pull yourself out of that position. So again, just like we were doing with the extension, I'm gonna focus in on breaths for this. I want to make sure that we are able to get the air and get that rib cage to expand backwards. So not only are we working on the thoracic spine rotation, we're working on your rib cage's ability to expand towards the back. That's a great, uh, tip that everybody kind of needs to focus in on when it comes to shoulder blade movement, upper back health, overall shoulder health, is that rib cage provides a platform for that shoulder blade to kind of lock onto. So if that rib cage is not in a good position, if that shoulder blade is not in a good position, again, we're getting way more movement out of the shoulders than we want to. So in this rotation, big deep breath in that bottom position, do a couple of those, and then you pull yourself out. Good. Perfect, that's the thread the needle. All right guys, so we just went over our extension and our rotation for our thoracic spine. Now what we need to do is attack the culprits or the muscles on the body that will be inhibiting your ability to get into that externally rotated and scapular uh, retracted and depressed position, which is the lats and the pecs. So the lats, if for those who don't know, the lats are actual internal rotator of that shoulder. So if you wanted to spread your lats, so if you got into a lat spread position, what you'll find is that as you spread those lats, your shoulder gets internally rotated. So if these lats are really, really, really tight, it's going to force that shoulder into that internally rotated position. Same thing with the pecs. If the pecs are really tight here, what we're gonna do is you're gonna find that those shoulders end up coming forward. If you notice, this position here is the opposite of what you're looking for at the bench. So if you are unable to get into a good position with the scaps down and back for a bench press and actually have it coming from the thoracic spine and the scaps as they are, this is all gonna come from the front of that shoulder. So the idea is we mobilize and stabilize the muscles around the shoulder, make sure the shoulder is doing shoulder things to help reduce the wear and tear and potential pain that can be happening on your shoulder when you bench press. All right, guys, so we worked on that level of that thoracic spine, working on that rotation and that extension. Now we're gonna be doing uh, the next level up, which is essentially stretching out any sort of tight muscles that will keep us in that forward internally rotated position. So first on that list, making sure that those lats get stretched out. Most of the time, people don't realize that the lats are actual internal rotators of that shoulder. So if your lats are really, really tight, you're not able to get into that good externally rotated position and get those scaps down and back. So what we're gonna be doing here, it's kind of a PNF stretch. What we're focusing in on is a couple things. You're gonna pull out a little bit more, get a nice stretch on that lat. And in this position, I want Alex to actively draw that elbow down, feel that lat engage without allowing that rib cage to flare up. So you hold this for about six or seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, good. And then you let that stretch. Again, when you're coming overhead with that elbow, 
and, and looking to stretch that lat. We're not looking for that rib cage to flare up, just like we were doing with that foam roller with the uh, extension. We want to make sure that rib cage is down and that we're stacking that position in order for us to actually be able to stretch that lat and not just get into further uh, lumbar extension. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do two or three rounds on each side. This is a great exercise that you can do in between your warm-up sets on the bench as well. So this is the lat stretch and we'll jump right into the next one which is a pec stretch. All right guys, for the pec stretch, specifically pec minor, what we want to be focusing in on is finding a surface or a wall. We're using the monolift here because we're lead FTS and uh, we can. So what you really want to focus in on, elbow slightly higher than shoulder, because what we're looking to do is stretch that pec minor. The pec minor goes this way. We want to stretch it the same way that it is on your body. With that in mind, you want to make sure that the elbow is pressed firmly against whatever surface you're going to be utilizing, whether it's a wall, whether it's a, a monolift, whatever it may be. And finally, instead of opening up your body sideways, what we want to do is imagine you're going flat to the wall and then thinking about rotating down, right? So armpit to your foot, rotating down, feeling that stretch right through that pec minor. And as you notice here, we are forcing ourselves into that externally rotated position at the shoulder, right? A lot of people lack their ability to externally rotate. We're working on that position, opening up that pec minor. And hopefully this will not only help you bench more weight, but can also do it without having that nagging pain at the front of that shoulder. All right, guys. So the last thing we're going to be working on before we jump into the bench press is our scapular competency. Scapular competency, fancy word, making, your, making sure that your shoulder blade can move in all ranges of motion, right? So what we're working on here from the half kneeling position is your ability to protract and retract, essentially getting your shoulder blade to move forward and backwards. So what we're going to be doing here from a half kneeling position, I'm going to have Alex Think about reaching that shoulder forward, reach, reach, reach. What's that doing? That's putting a nice stretch on all the muscles here, forcing that shoulder blade to come forward, protract forward. And now from there, what I want him to do is think about driving that shoulder blade into his opposite side back pocket, keeping that arm nice and long. Good, hold for a couple seconds, same thing, reach. And what we're really doing is working on your body's ability to not only protract that shoulder blade, but getting all the muscles around that rotator cuff, around that upper back to start firing better, to better retract those shoulder blades. You've already done the work on working on that thoracic extension and rotation. You've already done the work at stretching the muscles that may be inhibiting your ability to get into this position. Now what you're doing, you're getting some blood flow, you're getting some work, and you're helping to strengthen all the muscles in your upper back and around that shoulder that will help you get that shoulder blade down and back. If this is new for you, if this is difficult for you, this should be an accessory in your training as well. You can turn this into a row, you can turn this into an accessory exercise, but again, you need to practice these positions if you're not used to getting into these positions. One of the other things that we're going to be working on, and luckily enough is very easy to do, that we have this Elite FTS cable stack machine, find yours today at EliteFTS.com, is we're going to increase the range of motion of that and, and change the range of motion of that scap. So now we're going to be working on actively trying to upwardly rotate and downwardly rotate that scap. This is more challenging, but Alex, I know he can do it. So relax for a sec. Here we go. Same thing. As you notice here, it's a little bit higher. Now he's forcing his scap to upwardly rotate let it reach, reach, reach. And now you got to squeeze it down and back. Much more difficult. Again, this is not a base level exercise. This is something I would do as you get more and more competent with these. But again, this is a great way for you to get a little extra work on your scapular mobility and stability, but also work on a skill that's better for your bench pressing. If you're a power lifter, a competitive lifter, whatever. These can actually also be um, adjusted so that you're pulling more vertically as well. So the key is with this exercise is to make sure you are moving your scap in all planes of motion, stabilizing in all planes of motion, and making sure that your upper back, your rotator cuffs, everything is nice and safe, nice and happy. And this will help you feel better bench pressing and potentially avoid that shoulder pain. The best way that you guys can utilize this video is to start going through these yourself. You may find that one of these things helps you more than the other. 
And that's really why we're doing this, right? We're trying to help as many people as possible, whether it is with shoulder pain or low back pain or any of the videos that we do. The idea is that we're providing you with this information for you to be able to incorporate it into your training into whatever you do specifically. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, anything, do it down below. Like, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll see you in the next one.